Hello, this is Francisco Pulgar Vidal with FKI Quality. Today I would like to speak about the four operational diseases. Operations may be a competitive factor or may be an obstacle to the performance of a company. It's, interest, it's important to understand that uh, even though there are thousands of different challenges that companies face, they can be safely classified into four types of operational diseases. And those are those of being slow, rigid, defective, and obscure. And now we're going to be looking at some examples for each one of these. The operational disease of being slow is one that obviously nobody wants to have this happening to your operations. Uh, very, very rarely you will want anything to take longer than it has to. A couple of examples just to clarify. Uh, for instance, the late delivery of an electronic document. That almost makes no sense. Why would an electronic document take a long time to be delivered? And yet, it happens. Another example of a slow operation would be that when you see that your, your, your company has frequently delayed inspection starts, uh, which could be due to a number of reasons like not having a permit, not having the right people with the right skill in the right place and so on. Another type of operational disease is what we call being rigid or inflexible. This is also, also something uh, completely undesirable. A couple of examples of what would be a rigid operation would be, for instance, that it is uh, customary for unknown reasons that all deliveries should be received through gate number four. Nobody really knows why this is the case, and yet that's the only gate that we use to receive deliveries. It's a rigid operation. Another possibility would be that both uh, small and large purchases are processed in exactly the same way, which may be justifiable for a large purchase, but complete uh, overkill for a small purchase. The third type of operational disease is what we call defective or error prone. A defective operation is exactly the opposite of what anybody who would have designed a process set out to do in the first place. Nobody really wants to set up operations in order to do things wrongly or to get them done right the second time. You want to get them done right the first time. A couple of examples on this. Let's say you, um, using a, a, an application, you get a taxi ride. And this taxi ride, as now it's possible, you can get a number of options. Let's say that you wanted to have a taxi that would be equipped with a phone charger because your phone battery is now running low and the taxi says that it has a phone charger. So you should be able to just plug your phone while you're riding the taxi. Well, the taxi doesn't carry the phone charger as advertised. That clearly would be a defect, which can have some consequences in your inability to communicate later on that day. Another example would be that, let's say, customer first and last names are swapped, but this happens over 10,000 customer service letters. Clearly not the best kind of customer service and image for your company. The fourth example of an operational disease is that we, the one that we call an obscure operation. An obscure operation is one that may be free of the previous uh, diseases, but it is one that still creates uh, anxiety and lack of customer um, satisfaction with the service. For instance, having to speak with three or more departments just to find out the status of a service request. What's going on? Why can nobody give me an answer? Very typical. I suppose that most of us have experienced this uh, more than once. Another example of an obscure process is that, for instance, the, do the notification of missing document is sent to the customer as the last step of an approval process. Why would the company not tell the customer or the applicant that there was some paperwork missing early on in the process? It has uh, kind of put the customer in an obscure situation where there is no way of knowing what is necessary and what is next. So clearly, none of these processes are desirable. Uh, rather, none of these characteristics of processes are desirable. That's why we call them operational diseases. Now, remember again, problems come in thousands of forms, in thousands of ways, thousands of colors. It uh, it's may, may seem a little bit mind-boggling. Uh, but understanding that these really are instances of these four type of problems, slow, rigid, defective, and obscure, or a combination of these ones, 
will help us make sense of them and also then put us in the right position to begin solving these type of problems. So once this is realized, now we are going to have a better chance of solving problems once we can see all these type of challenges through the lens of SRDO, which is a slow, rigid, defective, and obscure. This is what I have seen across all type of operations, from paying for uh, potato chip uh, raw materials for a foods company, uh, for similarly when you need to service the asphaltic layer of a highway. All of these type of processes and anything that you can imagine in between can safely fall in these four categories. And then this gives us an advantage in trying to solve these problems, which we will explain at a later video. Thank you for your time.